Hello, greetings, and welcome to a special episode of Morrowind Modding Showcases, taking a look at the winners of the 2022 Morrowind Modding Madness Competition. A team-based month-long modding competition, Madness began way back on October 1st, with the teams given one month to try and build the best mod they could by November 1st. Ten teams entered to compete in Madness, representing some 45 modders, but only nine teams made it to the end. They faced a growing task to try and build a mod to fit the randomly chosen themes of industry and enterprise, and are also conflict, with each team just coming up with something completely different uh, to fit those themes. Building everything from new underground cities to massive dungeons, functional airships, new sailing mechanics, new towns and adventures, and just so much more. Uh, this has been, by far and away, the fiercest competition we have ever seen in a season of Morrowind Modding Madness. So many amazing mods were released for this year's competition. Uh, not a single one of them was a dud. They all added something new, something unique, with quality and polish. But at the end of the day, someone has to win, and so, after a lengthy judging process, I'm pleased to announce the winners. Uh, but before we get to that, I do want to note just a couple of things. Uh, clearly, you know, we're not going to do a ton of massive showcases for these mods. You know, at least not in this video. Uh, we've already covered them extensively in our Mod of the Day playlist. And, you know, if you'd like to see a more detailed showcase for each of the mods, the 2022 Season of Madness, you'll find a link to a playlist just right down below. Uh, second, uh, for those who want to see the mods of Madness Past, uh, we do have a Google Docs spreadsheet just linked down below with the list of winners and, you know, download links for all the past Madness competitions. Finally, uh, regardless of the results here today, uh, all the mods submitted for this year's Madness are absolutely quality and fantastic entries, and all the teams have done just a, a truly amazing job. Uh, they're all winners in my book, and they should be congratulated for accomplishing so much in just such a limited amount of time. But uh, with that said, let's introduce the winners of the 2022 Season of Madness. Coming in first place with their entry, Secrets of the Crystal City, is Team Ancestral Ashcons, composed of Melchior Dog, Judea Centeo, Seeloth, and Peter. After a truly rocky start, losing their quest rider on day one of the competition, the Ancestral Ashcons are victorious in this year's Madness competition, winning the Throne of Madness in a hard-fought battle that was far from certain given the rough start their team had. Uh, still, they were one of the favourites going into the competition, and uh, losing teammates aside, uh, they managed to meet those expectations and vastly exceed them with a truly groundbreaking Viticality Galore entry with Secrets of the Crystal City. Arguably the largest mod from this year's Madness competition, Secrets of the Crystal City adds a massive buried underground city to the game. A ruined, frothy city from the days of the Kaime, long since lost and forgotten, and now inhabited by escaped Argonian and Khajiit slaves. Though uh, all is not well with the new inhabitants. There's tensions between their factions, and ghost sightings have created conflict. It's up to you, a stranger, to either help restore unity or, perhaps, sow chaos. The choice is yours. Utterly massive in terms of scale, this mod and some of the just largest cavernous environments ever made from Morrowind, with caverns large enough to hold an entire city, with plenty of secrets, treasures, and hidden depths for you to discover. Not to mention the voracious visual vista of verticality that'll greet your gaze in every direction. Without question, Secrets of the Crystal City is an eye candy visual treat. The way the different districts of the city are framed in these gigantic caverns, the mirrors reflecting sunlight to highlight different parts of the city, the massive deposits of raw glass just adding that tint of atmospheric green lighting to everything. It is just, it is all just so simply, breathtakingly gorgeous. And that's before we even get all the Dwemer ruins looking even further below this frothy city. For there is far, far more deep down below in the depths with caverns of blue fungi and Dwemer ruins reminiscent of scenes from Blackreach. I can just, I can honestly say that Secrets of the Crystal City is probably the largest mod ever submitted for a madness competition. The fact that this was all built in a single month is 
Uh, honestly, mind blowing. But you know, to be sure, uh, there were just there were a lot of mind blowing mods uh, submitted in for this year's competition. Uh, still, there's an entire quest line here, a, just a full city for you to explore, with not just dungeons and hidden side chambers, but also shops, taverns, and homes, all built by just this in extremely talented team. It is, it is just plainly easy to see why this won the 2022 Madness competition. With a final score of 362 points out of a possible 400, it achieved a perfect judge preference score. Literally every judge wanted to keep this mod in their game. It is an amazing and stunning creation that just shouts adventure. Uh, personally, I just I can't recommend it enough. I mean, uh, what's not to like with all this sweet, sweet verticality? Everything about Secrets of the Crystal City is nothing less than a monumental triumph, and a first place finish here is uh, just certainly well deserved. But uh, moving on to our runner-up, uh, we have in second place Memento Mori by Team Goblin Goblins, uh, composed of Globe Bailo, Joseph McKean, Calenter, Melligerent, and Prof Armitage. Uh, coming into the competition, the Goblins were just a bit of a wildcard team. Only Prof Armitage had any experience with past Madness competitions, and uh, the Goblins were uh, going up against some just truly stacked and experienced teams. But uh, clearly, they've just they've exceeded all expectations. For Memento Mori is a gorgeous, verticality-inducing, lore-friendly expansion to the game that that just feels like a natural extension to the world of Morrowind, uh, one that could have easily been included with the base game. A Memento Mori expands upon the industry of death in Morrowind, and uh, specifically builds upon the in-game book Ancestors and the Dunmer, which states that the Great Ghost Fence is powered by the remains of the dead, with the deceased interred into the Ghost Fence itself, just to uh, keep the Great Barrier between Red Mountain and the rest of Morrowind intact, in order to protect against the spread of the Blight and Corpus. Of course, uh, in the vanilla game, uh, there was no visual evidence of this great effort to, you know, power the ghost fence with the remains of the dead. So uh, what the team has done here is to expand upon that original lore with uh, three great ossuaries. The ossuaries of Aeum, Vec, and Set, uh, named after each of the tribunal. Uh, here the dead are interred to power the Great Ghost Fence, with a massive series of catacombs linking the three Great Ossuaries together. Watched over and maintained by the Order of Ghosts, the Acolytes of the Clockwork, Buoyant Armages, and uh, even Ordinators to some degree. Uh, each of these Great Ossuaries has just been beautifully realised, with verticality galore, perfectly filling in a gap that uh, you never even realised was missing. And uh, what's more, uh, this mod makes no landscape edits. Uh, each ossuary is just built into the existing terrain, again just fitting in perfectly, and offering some just truly amazing vistas to come across. With some utterly gorgeous and atmospheric interiors, uh, the, the team has brought each of these locations to life, giving each of them an entirely unique look and feel with a design uh, worthy of Kirkbride himself. Uh, in addition, the catacombs act as a kind of mega dungeon, with safe paths through the maze of chambers and halls of the dead, but with plenty of dangers just lurking in the dark shadows beyond. And uh, those dangers promise additional adventure, treasure, and unique encounters, uh, should you venture off the main path. Uh, there's hours and hours of new content here, with new quests for you to do at each of the great ossuaries, and the pilgrimage of the dead a temple quest to visit the shrines in each of the ossuaries. Uh, once again, this is just, this is a simply an amazing mod. It, it almost staggers belief that it was released in only a single month. Uh, everything about Memento Mori exudes polish and quality, and with lots of verticality and dungeon delving. There's just, there is simply every reason to give this mod a try. The Goblin Goblins have created just a, a truly special mod, uh, one that will certainly be a, a, just a permanent part of my install from now on, and uh, one that uh, just, you know, more than deserves second place in a just a truly competitive year. Uh, next up though, just uh, rounding out the podium, uh, we have Investigations at Tel Uris by the Dreamy Dreamers, a uh, composed of Billy Fighter, Ruffin Van Gaar, Marcond, and uh, Katya Corral. 
The uh, Dreamy Dreamers were uh, certainly just one of the more intriguing teams heading into the competition. A combination of just truly talented modders made the Dreamers an early favorite, but uh, unlike the other teams' madness, uh, they kept their mod just shrouded in a veil of mystery throughout the entire runtime of the competition. In, in fact, uh, not only did they keep their mod under wraps, but uh, they ran a decoy campaign with a fake mod premise and uh, staged screenshots supposedly showing development on their Daggett Corporation mod. Uh, but of course, uh, that wasn't what they were really working on, for uh, their mod was finally revealed at the end of the competition. And uh, what a mod it is! Investigations at Tel Uris and a new floating chain of Talbani Islands to the world of Morrowind, often their own little interior world space to ensure maximum compatibility with other mods. Uh, Tel Uris is a city in the sky, free from all trade restrictions and regulations, where anything goes, from necromancy to Dwemer research and development, to the just the creation of various abominations, alchemical concoctions, and all sorts of magical experiments. Uh, you'll find dozens of unique and interesting characters in Tel Uris, from a variety of slowed, uh, each with their own agendas, to an assortment of mad, oddball, and uh, potentially nefarious personalities, uh, most of whom are tied up in the Mon's main quest. For someone is sabotaging Tal Uris, and uh, as a stranger to this strange land, you've been hired to investigate who or what is trying to bring down this so called free market paradise. And the suspects are everyone. They all have different stories to tell and secrets to hide, but it's up to you to uncover which one is the saboteur. Tal Uris has a fairly lengthy main quest line, and uh, even a few side quests all of which will just take you hours to play through. And uh, there is no question that Tel Uris is one of the largest mods from this year's Madness competition. Like with Secrets of the Crystal City and Memento Mori, it is just, it is simply astounding just how much the team managed to build in a single month. There are dozens of interiors here, just each one beautifully, cozily, and atmospherically detailed and decorated. Your visit to Tel Uris will just be one of constant mesmerizing wonder at all the gorgeous scenery around you. With its seedy alchemical labs and dark and sinister necromatic lairs providing just a copious amount of atmosphere to immerse you into this just beautifully strange place. And of course, there's also the creatures, from the half moon gods to the various abominations you'll find looking about, to the undead slave labor. There's just a lot of amazing visuals in Tal Uris. With such an amazing setting, with such scenic environments, and an intriguing main quest to boot, it's uh, easy to see why Investigations at Tal Uris was a judge favorite. And uh, not just a judge favorite, but uh, also just a pretty popular mod overall. Uh, getting the second most endorsements on the Nexus of any Madness mod, uh, behind only Secrets of the Crystal City. In any other Madness competition in any other year, it would have been a clear-cut winner, but it was such a fierce competition in 2022, it only came in third place. But, uh, you know, I, I would still consider it to be a must-have mod, and it is certainly just another permanent addition to my save game, uh, much like Memento Mori and Secrets of the Crystal City. I would just, I would highly recommend it. Uh, coming up in fourth place, uh, we have Your Marshi and the Visage of Mazund by the Provincial Privateers, composed of Devshaw, Mojo187, MW Gek, Tanakatil, and. <sighs> the Inbian Chaos Demon that haunts my waking nightmares of their ridiculous name. <sighs> Jack him off, whack him off. Oh gosh, just every time, every time. It gives me a headache having to say that name so often. But uh, anyway, the Provincial Privateers are the first team in Madness history to be composed entirely of province modders from Project Tamriel and Tamriel Rebuilt. And, you know, given the high quality of those projects, uh, there was never any question that the Provincial Privateers would build something just truly worthwhile and unique. Though, uh, what they did end up creating is just vastly different than what you might expect from uh, such a group. Uh, there's no massive and overly ambitious new landmasses here, but instead, uh, you'll be greeted with a series of new adventures in Yomarshi and the Visage of Mazund, uh, taking you to numerous new locations, new ruins, tombs, and shrines, 
uh, where you can uncover new artifacts and uh, gradually help build a new Dwemer airship uh, from which you can ply the skies in just an entirely new way to travel across the world of Morrowind. It all starts out in Plesiad, when you meet the antiquity dealer Yomarshi and help her just uh, collect uh, some items from the Census and Excise office in Sidonin. And uh, from there, uh, you'll become her assistant, going out to lost and forgotten tombs and ancient orc barrows, uh, just uh, collecting all sorts of treasures, relics, and items of antiquity. Uh, along the way, uh, you'll fight off rival antiquity dealers, uh, delve into the depths of buried Dwemer ruins, and uh, gather an assortment of components for your machine's Dwemer airship. Uh, your reward at the end of this questline is the airship itself, and it, it is easily the highlight of the entire mod. I, I, I mean, the new dungeons and adventures are all great of course, but uh, the airship, ah, uh, the airship to ply the skies in your own ship, rising above the lands of Morrowind and traveling through the clouds, an endless expanse of verticality. There's just no experience quite like it, and it is just an absolute blast to play with. Uh, the, the team just really nailed the controls. Uh, this airship handles like a dream, allowing you to ascend to new heights or descend for a landing, parking your airship on any just relatively flat surface, uh, giving you a new way to explore the land tomorrow wind. Uh, personally, you know, I think this is just, this is a great way to explore the mainland of Terry Built. You know, just take to the skies and use your airship to find new landmarks and locations to visit. And uh, then you can land and, you know, use your airship's cabin as a mobile base. Your Marshi and the Visage of Mazund uh, clearly just impress the judges with the beautiful verticality functionality of their airship propelling the team into fourth place overall in uh, what is, quite frankly, a very, very competitive year. Uh, not bad for a team of Madness newbies, uh, none of whom have ever participated in a Madness competition before. And uh, certainly, I would just, I would highly, highly recommend checking out your machine. Uh, the airship alone is just absolutely worth it. And uh, personally, I, I plan to use it as a new way to travel to and explore new mods in the future. It's just, you know, it's a lot of fun to play around with. But uh, anyway, let's just, uh, let's move on to our fifth place winner, the mod in the center of our Madness liner, uh, which uh, ended up being far more reclaimed by the Ceaseless Centurions, composed of Greatness 7, Ramirez, Safebox, and Tio alone. Probably no team has seen more shakeups in this year's Madness competition than the Ceaseless Centurions. They started the competition with five members, but uh, quickly lost two of them, uh, leaving the team just rather unbalanced before finally recruiting two alone, uh, stabilizing just a, a somewhat shaky start to the competition. With all the chaos, uh, which is admittedly a staple of Madness competitions, I, I, I mean it's not really Madness until a team falls apart, uh, the team wasn't quite able to achieve the original scope that they were aiming for with Farm Off Reclaimed. Uh, but still, what they did release is nothing short of breathtaking. Farm Off Reclaimed is a complete overhaul and replacement of the original 2002 Dungeon Rock by Bethesda. A uh, somewhat simplistic plugin that uh, Bethesda had originally released to demonstrate the capabilities of the construction set. 20 years later and the Caesar Centurions has just finally turned the siege at Fort Farmoth into a properly unique and cinematic experience, with an endless horde of skeletons arising from the ground to batter you and your companions, and an endless storm of eerie fog and deadly lightning. Uh, far from your typical dungeon delve, you'll have to cross a bay of shipwrecks, uh, jumping from one wreck to the next, always keeping on the move and staying out of the water. At least you'll be shocked by the deadly arcing rays of lightning that strike uh, constantly all around you. As you approach the main island of Fort Farmoff, uh, you'll be greeted with a glorious and epic dose of verticality, with the towers of this cursed citadel just perfectly framed by arcs of lightning an experience that again just uh, feels utterly cinematic in its execution. But as epic as the exterior is, it's far from the only thing overhauled by Farm Off Reclaimed, for the dungeons themselves have been expanded, overhauled, and rebuilt, with new scripted encounters for you to fight through, and a sinister green fog that just uh, that lends a degree of atmosphere that was utterly lacking in the original Farm Off mod. 
Uh, Fire Moth Reclaimed is just, is certainly up there in terms of the best Dungeon Mods release for the 2022 Season of Madness. And uh, consequently, one of the best Dungeon Mods of 2022 period. Uh, though having said that, uh, Secrets of the Crystal City and Memento Mori, you know, uh, certainly give Fire Moth Reclaimed a, a bit of a run for its dungeon delving money. Uh, still, uh, this is uh, this is just a really atmospheric and exciting dungeon mod, and if not for the fact that it doesn't really, you know, fully match the themes of the 2022 Madness competition, uh, which I'll remind you were enterprise and industry and conflict, it, it, it might have ranked just a bit higher. Uh, the team had originally planned to do both a full dungeon overhaul and then a rebuilding and restoration phase, which would have been, you know, a better fit for both of those themes. But uh, even though a lot of the interior design for the restoration phase was completed, it, it was uh, sadly axed since the team just didn't quite have enough time during the competition. Uh, with any luck, you know, the, the team will just will finish this mod one day, but, you know, what's already here is just perfectly playable and a, a really just a fun dungeon romp. And it is certainly, uh, without question, just the best overhaul for Fort Firemaw released to date. But uh, anyway, uh, next up uh, we have our sixth place finisher, the Horror at Havel Mine by the Quama Coalition, uh, composed of Danina, Olive, Ring Comics, and the Dragon Fisherman. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's the Dragon Mud Crab. Uh, easy to get them confused, though. Uh, one of the underdog teams going into the 2022 Madness competition, the Quama Coalition was a team of mostly newbies to Madness, with the sole exception of the Dragon Mud Crab. And uh, he wasn't even part of the, you know, the original team roster. Uh, going into the competition, the Quama Coalition was originally a three person team. But after the Drunken Mud Crab uh, split from Team Sexy Slippery Sloans, uh, he ended up with the Quamas. And uh, all in all, uh, for a team of underdogs, uh, they, they just they performed remarkably well, uh, coming up with a unique mod concept and uh, creating one of the first truly new own your own business type mods of the past few years. The horror at Valmine starts out when you come across an egg mining operation along the road between Aldrun and Morgan. Uh, right next to the stronghold of Baal Isra. Uh, here you'll be tasked with fighting off an incursion of the Sixth House. Uh, they've apparently taken over the egg mine and are uh, performing some sort of strange experiments with the Quama there, uh, creating deadly abominations for some nefarious purpose. Uh, part Dungeon Delve, part Quest, uh, the real meat of the Whore at Havel Mine uh, actually comes after you finish this, you know, this little introductory quest and agree to just take over the mine operations. And if you do become the new owner of the mine, uh, you'll find 11 new quests to keep you occupied, uh, performing various tasks for the occupants of the mining office that uh, might just, you know, help you and your mining operation, like uh, sabotaging the nearby Nissus Egg Mine, or uh, curing the Quama Queen, or performing just other, you know, trivial tasks, like uh, tracking down a lost set of house keys. But uh, the big thing here is the mining operation itself, uh, which will generate daily profits with just a, a number of features for you to upgrade, improve, and experiment with. Uh, you'll need to hire some miners first, and uh, you'll find them just uh, scattered about the game world. And uh, you'll also need to hire some gods to, you know, to deter theft. Uh, you can kind of see where, you know, just uh, some inspiration has been taken from Erangard Mines, a classic mod from the early age of Morrowind modding that had uh, pretty much, you know, kind of the same premise, but with a diamond mine instead of an egg mine. Uh, unlike Erangard Mines, though, uh, you aren't just limited to hiring miners and gods. Uh, you can also repair the rail network, improving efficiency, uh, level up your miners and gods, upgrade their mining picks, and a research forbidden Quama technologies using the experimental lab, a growing a cloned Quama queen, and a just concocting strange elixirs for your miners. Uh, this is, uh, simply put, just one of the more advanced business mods to be developed for Morrowind and Ages, with just a, a lot of major upgradable features. It, it really does just perfectly embody the themes of the 2022 Madness competition which were, again, industry and enterprise, and also conflict. Uh, the, the team actually came very close to coming in fifth place, and if not for some technical issues, uh, might have even come in 
uh, fourth place with a bit of luck. But, uh, without question, you know, what here is just, it is absolutely worth playing, especially for fans of the own your own business concept. Now, uh, just going on, in uh, seventh place, we have Sales and Sales by the Dark Sisterhood. Uh, composed of Alice on 93, Danae, JCS, Lucifer, and Video Quam. Uh, when the 2022 Madness competition began, the Dark Sisterhood was one of the most anticipated teams, and uh, certainly one of the favourites to win. They had a host of talent covering just pretty much every major modding base. But uh, where they had experience and talent, uh, they were also going up against the most competitive season of Madness on record. And uh, so, in a very competitive year, they just, uh, they fell a bit behind. It is worth noting though, that the gap between the final scores were just were very narrow. If a few things had turned out differently, sales and sales could have easily come in 5th or 4th place. And indeed, uh, conceptually, sales and sales is a truly ambitious mod worthy of madness, adding an entirely new and modern sailing system to Morrowind allowing you to ply your own ships, longboats, and rowboats across the seas, rivers, and lakes of Morrowind. But at first, at this mod begins when you meet a boat captain in Alvothi and agree to join his crew. Uh, his reign is a short one, as uh, shortly afterwards he'll be killed by pirates, and uh, you'll have to repel the borders, uh, leaving you with your very own cargo ship and a small motley crew. From here you can sail to anywhere in the game world, plying the ocean waves, traveling from town to town, negotiating contracts and delivering cargo, or else using your boat as a mole base from which to conduct your adventures. Uh, surprisingly, a Sails and Sails is actually the largest quest mod released for the 2022 Madness competition, with some 20 new quests for you to go on. From tracking down new members of your crew, gathering contracts for cargo, and doing personal errands for your crewmates. Uh, there's even an egg mine overhaul included with the mod, uh, alongside a quest to reopen the egg mine and take cargo shipments of Kwama eggs. Uh, but the real meat here is actually sailing your own vessels, including just a number of sailable craft. From cargo ships to longboats to ships from the province mods, skiffs, and rowboats. Uh, the latter of which you can literally just pick up and place in a body of water and uh, row around in. Uh, there's always been just something incredibly soothing about sailing your own ship. Uh, as I've mentioned several times in the past, I have just I have a lot of nostalgia for Morrowind's old sailing mods. And it is it is just really nice to have a modernized option for exploring the world on the open sea. Uh, now, it is worth noting that uh, since the original release, uh, Sails and Sails has been updated to include fast travel for, you know, for ships to just uh, travel to certain ports. And uh, those updates also include faster movement speed for ships, as that was, uh, that was a bit of a sticking point with the judges. In any event though, a new sailing mod was just uh, certainly a nice madness surprise, and uh, Sails and Sails has just a lot to offer. And uh, even though it did come in, you know, towards the bottom of the rankings here, it is just, it is definitely worth playing for yourself. Just uh, moving on to our penultimate mod, we have our 8th place finisher, La Udai by the Mad Crabs, uh, composed of Lady Phoenix Farrows, Moiglass, Clidium, Lorth, and Ryland. Uh, just another underdog team, uh, outside of Lady Phoenix Farrows, the Mad Crabs were a team of newbies to this year's Madness competition. But uh, despite that, uh, they managed to put together just a, a truly scenic and beautiful mod in Halat Udai. Uh, perhaps uh, somewhat peculiarly, uh, given the mod's position in 8th place, uh, Halat Udai actually ranked pretty high in terms of functionality and judge preference, with most judges giving the mod high marks in both categories. Uh, but the reason for its 8th place finish has to do with innovation. For the team just, uh, you know, lost a lot of points compared to other, more ambitiously innovative mods. But again, I'll just, I'll point out that the gap between 8th place and 4th place is uh, really pretty narrow. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's easy to imagine that uh, things uh, could have gone differently. But uh, anyway, uh, La Udai is just, is a simply gorgeous little idyllic portside town at the mouth of the Odai River with about a dozen buildings or so. 
and uh, the town just acts as, uh, you know, as a sort of natural trade link with Bomora, where deep water cargo ships can transfer their cargo onto, uh, you know, onto shallow water barges for transportation up the Odai. And uh, being along the road between Ha'ud and Sidonin, you know, it has just a few shops and a tavern for would-be travellers. Utterly scenic in just every respect, uh, Ha'udai is a lovely place to visit, with just lots of detail and uh, even a few quests, including a rather sizable dungeon for you to explore and fight through, with just lots of atmospheric encounters. Uh, honestly, uh, while this mod may have ranked low, uh, Ha'udai is one of the best actual new town mods that we've seen from Arrowind. Uh, really, we just we get very few town mods like this. Uh, typically, we get town or city overhauls, but you know, actual new towns added to Morrowind's original landscape? Uh, those are comparatively rare, and uh, new town mods at this level of quality and polish are uh, pretty much unheard of. La Udai is just is a beautifully realized location that uh, just fits in well with the game world. And it comes with some just stunningly cozy interiors, scenic underground cabins, and uh, more than a few things for you to see and do. Uh, just because it came in 8th place, it uh, doesn't mean it's not worth playing, because Hla Udai is just an absolute blast to play through, and a town that you'll want to visit again and again. But uh, now we've just, we finally come to our last mod in today's showcase with the ninth place finishing Shipyards of Ardenfell by Team Sexy Slippery Sloans, composed of Detail Devil and Sir Jack. By far and away the smallest team from the 2022 Madness competition, and uh, one of the most inexperienced with no Madness veterans, the Sexy Slippery Sloans were always going to face an uphill battle in a fiercely contested competition. Uh, but, at the end of the day, uh, Shipyards of Ardenfell is just a, a wonderfully immersive and uh, generally well-executed mod concept that does fill just a notable gap in the visible industries of Morrowind. Uh, after all, uh, Vardenfell is an island where most of the towns and cities are on the coast. Uh, one would think uh, there would be actual shipyards where, you know, ships are being built uh, somewhere. Such a concept is just is perfectly in line with the competition's themes. But uh, notably, it, it is just, you know, the small mod from Madness, and at that lack of scale, uh, compared to the bigger mods from the competition, uh, probably did just end up costing it a few points. But uh, that said, you know, Shipyards of Ardenfell and uh, three new shipyards from Arrowind, uh, one each in the towns of Cedarning, Gnarmok, and the city of Sadrafmora. Uh, at these shipyards, uh, you can see ships being, you know, visibly constructed, raised on platforms with cranes and equipment, uh, just ready to be pushed off to sea when ready. Each of these shipyards has been wonderfully created with lots of immersive details, uh, though my personal favourite is uh, probably the one in Sea uh, where you can see a cargo ship being outfitted, uh, just with eight set logs ready to roll it out into the ocean when it's complete. And uh, there's just, there's a nice bit of verticality here. Uh, what with the, you know, the cranes and everything. It, it's just, it's a very scenic location. But uh, these aren't just, you know, neat and most of all details. Oh no, they also have a handful of quests associated with each shipyard. From dealing with runaway slaves to tracking down a missing ship and handling a shady character. Uh, there's some unique scripted components here to just uh, to make these quests more than just your standard fair fetch quests. And overall, uh, while this mod, you know, may have come in last place, it, it just it has a lot of charm and style to recommend it. But uh, that's our final mod for the 2022 season of Morrowind Modding Madness. Uh, uh, again, just all the teams submitted some just truly excellent mods. Uh, everything that was released for the 2022 Madness competition is just absolutely worth playing. Uh, this has truly just been the best Madness competition on record. And I cannot, I cannot uh, be any happier with the results. I mean, just so much glorious verticality. Uh, again, again, I just, I'd like to thank everyone who participated for just such an amazing event. Uh, you all deserve a round of applause for just making it through a, just a truly challenging competition with some truly high quality entries. Uh, personally, you know, I just, I don't know how we're going to top this in 2023. But uh, that's it for Madness. Uh, the next competition will be the 2023 Winter Mod Jam on February 3rd. 
So until next time, as always, uh, down links are just uh, right down below. And uh, real quick, I, I would just like to, you know, take a moment to thank our patrons, uh, including uh, Static JMac, uh, Area5, Slash Summer Mean, uh, Billy Fighter, Queewee, Cyprinius, Danae, Doyant, Danina, Dennis418, Exavian, Yame Alcazo Castor now, Julian, Corridor, Mangasteer, Lord Brinny, Macbone, Milk Your Dog, Millord, Michael, a Mr. The Josh Man, Nor Cascade, Old Navy Twitchit, Opera Jack, Four Cubes, Povio Holo, Raven Talon, Arfuso, Rissily, Sand Gentleman, Shadow Bash Wine, Shooter, Sugar Cat, Stiff Kitten, Talvani with a thousand nicknames, Two Timing Trauma Root, Tyra Rain, Voot Tot, and Xero Fox. Uh, if you'd like to join them, check out our rewards, including early access, uh, behind-the-scenes content, and access to polls to, you know, just uh, to decide what kind of content we showcase, uh, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Uh Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.